three-phase dual converter. The three-phase dual converter where two three-phase converter are connected back to back, as shown in above figure. When we require four quadrant operation for variable speed drives, we choose the dual converter that is used in the applications up to two megawatts. As the instantaneous voltage differences between the output voltage of the converter, a circulating current flows through the converter. The circulating current is normally limited by a circulating reactor L in this part. This is our converter 1 and this is our converter 2 connected to the load here. That converter 1 is operated at firing angle alpha 1 which is also known as delay angle where converter 2 is operated at the firing angle alpha 2 and the condition for this is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equals to pi or 180 degrees. Then if we operate the converter 1 with alpha 1, then we need to operate converter 2 with 180 degrees minus alpha 1 pi minus alpha 1 which is equals to alpha 2. And we know when T1 is on, in converter 1, T2 and T0 will come to operation so that the current flows through the load. When T3 is on, T2 and T4 will come to conduction. When T5 is on, T4 and T6 will come to conduction. Now, similar thing happens in converter 2 that when T1 dash is on, T2 dash and T6 dash will conduct. When T3 is on, T2 dash, T4 dash will conduct. When T5 dash is on, T4 dash and T6 dash will conduct to complete the circuit and the current flows through the load. But here we are getting two voltages that is V0 1 from converter 1 and V0 2 from the converter 2. Then the resultant output V0 is given by V0 1 plus V0 2. Now uh, this is our input voltage with this form. If converter 1 is conducted with a delay angle alpha 1 equals to 60 degrees, which is pi by 3, then converter 2 be conducted at alpha 2 equals to 180 minus 60 degrees which is nothing but 120 degrees or 2 pi by 3. Now in the converter 1 with the firing angle 60 degrees I'm going to conduct here this is 60 degrees then VAN starts conducting until the VBN starts conducting. So VBN is going to start conducting after this line 60 degrees. So here VBN is going to conduct. Similarly, VCN is going to conduct after 60 degrees. VN is going to start at 5 by 6 plus alpha 1. VBN is going to start at 150 degrees plus alpha 1. And VCN is going to start at 270 degrees plus alpha 1. This will conduct from here to here. And this will conduct from here to here. And from here to here. This is going to conduct and this is due to t1 this is due to t2 this is due to t3 now in the bottom mix when vin is on vcn is in positive and it needs to start at an alpha of 60 degrees so here the vcn is going to start conducting until the next thyristor is going to start and here this is positive and it need to conduct after 60 degrees so this is going to start conducting from here before also this is present and this is going to conduct until here. So the resultant will be if you draw the resultant waveform for this converter 1 output V not 1 here VAM VBN so VAB VAM and VCN so VAC, VBN and VCN so VBC, VBN, VAN so VBA, VCN, VAN, VCA, VCN, VBN, VCB, VCA. Now this is regarding the converter 1. Now the converter 2 is going to conduct the area where converter 1 is absent. The remaining area or empty spaces you consider that will be the converter 2's output then if you track that 
then you will be getting converter to output in R2. B, A, C. B, B, C. B, B, A. B, C, A. B, C, B. B, A, B. And the remaining part is going to follow here. B, A. Now, let us try to draw the resultant. This is our resultant that is V01 plus V02, which is the exact output across the load. And the waveforms for when alpha alpha 1 equals to 60 degrees, then alpha 2 equals to 120 degrees for converter 1, converter 2, and the resultant. Now, VAN equals to VM sin omega t and VBN equals to VM sin omega t minus 2 pi by 3. And Vcn equals to Vm sine omega t plus 2 pi by 3. These are line to neutral voltages. Then line to line voltages Vab equals to Van minus Vbn. That equals to we have already seen the values that root 3 Vm sine omega t plus 5 by 6. Vbc equals to Vbn minus Vcn that equals to root 3 Vm sine omega t minus 5 by 2 and Vca equals to Vcn minus Van which equals to root 3 Vm sine omega t plus 5 pi by 6. On the waveforms, we can observe pi by 6 plus alpha 1 less than or equal to omega t less than or equal to pi by 2 plus alpha 1 v not 1 equals to vab and v not 2 equals to vbc v not 1 is the output voltage across the converter 1 v not 2 is the output voltage across the converter 2 the instantaneous voltage across the inductor during this interval is given by vr equals to v not 1 plus v not 2 that equals to vab minus vbc to vm sin omega t plus pi by 6 minus sin omega t minus pi by 2 I'm going to get root 3 vm cos omega t minus pi by 6 now the circulating current ir of t is given by 1 by omega l r integral pi by 6 plus alpha 1 omega t vr of d omega t 1 by omega l r integral pi by 6 plus alpha 1 to omega t 3 vm Plus omega t minus pi by 3. This value is 3 vm. D omega t. If you calculate this value, you will get 3 vm by omega l r sin omega t minus pi by 6 minus sin alpha 1. This is circulating current i r of t. Now, this value will be max when sin omega t minus pi by 6 is equal to 1 or omega t minus 5 by 6 equals to 5 by 2 or simply omega t equals to 2 pi by 3 and when alpha 1 equals to 0. Now this circulating current IR is going to depend upon the angle alpha 1 as well as the inductor LR and this will be maximum when omega t equals to 2 pi by 3 and alpha 1 equals to 0. Even without any external load the converter would be continuously running due to this circulating current. As a result, a ripple voltage across the inductor. This allows a smooth reversal of load current during the changeover from one quadrant operation to the another and provides fast dynamic response for electrical motor drives.